de passage en France, les équipes de Bungie ont convié la presse hexagonale à une présentation de Halo Reach. Comme à notre habitude, nous en avons profité pour poser quelques questions sur ce nouveau FPS à un des membres du studio. Cette fois, c'est Brian Jarad, le community manager de Bungie, qui s'y colle. Halo Reach is uh, the next big Halo saga. This is our biggest, most ambitious game that we've ever worked on at Bungie. It's going to be the biggest and best Halo game yet. It's a brand new story, brand new heroes. It's a prequel to the Halo trilogy. So we're going all the way back to the time before Halo Combat Evolved, before Master Chief, and we're telling the story of the planet Reach and the invasion of the Covenant and its eventual destruction, but we're going to follow the heroism and sacrifice of these Spartans on his noble team and their efforts to fend off the Covenant and ultimately allow Master Chief to go on his adventures, which result in the saving of all of mankind. Uh, Halo Reach is a brand new game, very different. Uh, first of all, there's no Master Chief, so we're, we have a whole new set of heroes now, the Spartan 3s of Noble Team. Uh, it's the first time in a Halo series you'll be fighting with a whole squad of Spartans, and the player will be assuming the role of a new hero known as Noble Six. And throughout the game, you'll be able to customize the, the look and appearance of your character and, and really build out your own unique Spartan that you'll see in the cinematics, as well as uh, every other game mode that, that Reach has to offer. So, It's bigger, better, uh, new experiences around every corner, like flying a ship in outer space and, and, and engaging in really big, intense uh, space combat sequences, new vehicles, new weapons, and of course, the addition of armor abilities with things like the jetpack and the armor lock and drop shield uh, really add a new dynamic to the gameplay and a whole new level of strategy. Well, the story of Reach uh, focuses on this planet, and in the Halo fiction, the planet Reach is kind of the military stronghold. It's, it's the epicenter of, of all of, of mankind's military and science development. This is also the planet where the whole Spartan program originated from. So it's a very, very important strategic planet for, for mankind. And the Covenant, this alien collective, uh, of this alien species group, has been moving through the galaxy, wiping out mankind. They've, they've killed millions of people. And they're always searching for Earth, and they're searching for, for man. And when they find Reach, it's not a good thing. So. By the end of the game, we already know that this entire planet will be destroyed. Hundreds of millions of people are, are going to perish, so it's a, it's a much darker, different story for Halo, but it's really going to be highlighting the bright moments and the heroism and the triumphs on the battlefield of these brand new Spartans on this noble team. And for the first time in a Halo game, we're going to get to know these characters, they're going to take their helmets off, and we're really going to have a more character-driven, intimate story than we've been able to ever tell in the Halo series. The Noble Team are, are the primary characters here. Uh, the leader, Noble, uh, Noble One, his name is Carter. He's the leader of the squad. Cat, she's a female Spartan. She's known as Noble Two. Uh, she actually is also kind of most recognizable by her robotic arm. Um, all the members of Noble Team have seen a lot of combat in their day, and they all have a unique, distinct armor that they've customized and repaired throughout their battles. Um, June is Noble Team's sniper. Uh, he's pretty lethal with a sniper weapon. He's good at sort of more stealth and long-range combat. George is the big guy. He's the only member of Noble Team who's actually the same type of Spartan as Master Chief. So he's a little more advanced, a little more powerful. He carries the big gigantic turret. Um, so all these different characters will be working together throughout the campaign and really bring in uh, different gameplay experiences as you play through the missions. We all like the idea of doing a prequel because, you know, for, for several reasons, the planet Reach and, and the story of its, of its downfall is a really important part of the Halo saga, and it's kind of a turning point. It's really what, what really allowed Master Chief to, to even go on this journey and exist and create the Halo game. So for fans, it has a lot of relevance, and it's a really critical key moment in the human covenant battle. But it was also a time to finally be able to give fans a chance to play with a whole squad of Spartans. And, By the time Halo 1 starts, Master Chief's the only Spartan left. And, you know, people that have read the novels have, have always had this idea of what it might be like to see a group of Spartans working together and overcoming tremendous odds. And by doing a prequel, we, we had the opportunity to do that as well. We've just evolved the gameplay in a lot of different ways. I think the addition of armor abilities now is a pretty significant change to the, to the gameplay formula. Uh, whether it's flying in the sky as a jetpack or turning yourself invisible or temporarily becoming inv invincible with the armor lock, 
uh, deciding which armor ability you'd like to use and when to use it is a, is a whole new strategic layer to, to the game. And playing one mission with one armor ability and then going back and trying it again with a different armor ability, it's a whole different playthrough and a whole different experience. So it's, it's a very different uh, feel for the game. But you know, beyond that, we didn't want to go too far away from what makes the Halo games Halo. You know, in order to pull off the vision that Bungie had for Reach and really make sure this was our biggest, best Halo game and deliver this epic experience of a whole planetary scale battle, we had to rebuild the technology from the ground up. So this is the best looking Halo game we've ever produced. Everything's running at a higher resolution. Our polygon counts are dramatically higher. Our texture resolutions are, are much higher. And everything's just going to look better and, and feel more detailed and more real and our, our missions and our worlds are going to be bigger and broader and more vast and we just really wanted to give the player a sense of being a part of this fantastical world of Reach and feeling like they're a part of these huge battles that are going to have more enemies, more explosions and just, just more intense combat than we've ever had before in a Halo game. Space combat is just one example of the types of brand new things that we wanted to do with players in Reach. Uh, it's one mission in the game, so you'll actually start out finding your way through a beach, uh, a little bit like some of the missions you might remember from Halo Combat Evolve, but you'll storm a beach through intense infantry combat, you'll retake a command center, you'll get inside the cockpit of your ship, and then you'll seamlessly fly into space. And at that point, it's a, it's a wide open, really epic scale uh, battle space encounter that's, that's pretty much up there with like the biggest space battles you've seen in Star Wars movies. Uh, four players can play it together, all flying their own ships around. Uh, the Saber is what, it, is what the, our ship is called, and um, you're able to do barrel rolls and backflips and lock on missiles, and it's a really natural fit to the Halo vehicle uh, sort of offering in the game, but it's a really different and unique gameplay experience, and we think fans are really going to enjoy it. Halo Reach is multiplayer modes pretty much span every aspect of the game. There's not a single thing in Reach that you can't do with, with your friends. So the campaign is also multiplayer. It's up to four people cooperatively. Uh, we also have Firefight, our cooperative game mode that's really sort of like the arcade experience for Halo. There's no story. It's just you and your friends going to battle against lots of different Covenant and it's just it's a lot of fun. Uh, we also have our competitive head-to-head -head multiplayer offering which is up to 16 people and that's classic stuff like Capture the Flag and Slayer, but also brand new game modes like Invasion, uh, Headhunter, Stockpile, and such like that. And then even our map editor Forge and even our safe film theater can also all be enjoyed with your friends as well. So everything about Reach is met with multiplayer uh, sort of in, in your friends in mind. Forge is our map editor that we brought out with Halo 3, and we've, we've done a lot to try and make it even more powerful uh, more efficient and just easier to use. So you should be able to build even bigger, more complicated and more interesting maps in, in Reach than you ever could in Halo 3. Um, and you'll be able to do this on a new map that we've built called Forge World, which is a, just a gigantic, huge connected space. It's the biggest like multiplayer space we've ever created in the Halo game. And it's set, it's set on the Halo ring, so you'll be able to sort of see the Halo skybox that we all remember from the first games. And you can play through a recreation of Blood Gulch, you can build your own maps from scratch. There's about 150 different unique building blocks from walls to huge towers to bridges and you'll be able to construct all these maps any way you'd like to, save them, put them on Xbox Live and share them with the entire community. I can't talk quite about our specific DLC plans yet because we haven't even actually shipped uh, the game to stores, but I think it's safe to say that there will be some DLC down the road and it's really important for, for Bungie that, that Halo Reach and our community continues to have strong support after the game's been released. It's a brand new story and we're going to be telling a, a new story focusing on new heroes of Noble Team. So this, this game won't, won't, will not feature Master Chief, uh, he's not part of our campaign, but for fan service, uh, for fans who, who love Master Chief, you'll be able to go in the armory and unlock Master Chief's voice for use in firefights, so you can still hear Master Chief talking to you, and you can even customize your own armor to look just like Master Chief if you want to. The Bungie team uh, going into Reach, knowing that this would be our, our final Halo game, and it's been exciting and inspiring because you know we want to make sure our last game is our best game yet. And, we want to make something that we can be proud of and that our fans can, can, can enjoy for, for years to come. So it's been exciting working on this game and knowing that this will be the most defining Halo game we've ever, we've ever created. But it's also obviously a little bit sad as well because we have a special place in our hearts for Halo. And you know we've created this universe. We've been working in it now for 10 years. And 
it, it will be sad to, uh, to, to walk away from it, but at least we'll be able to know that, that we've had a great run, we've had tremendous support from our fans around the world, and uh, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll, they'll agree that Reach is definitely the best Halo game that we've ever made. We're not really ready to talk about that quite yet. I can just tell you that just like Halo or even Marathon and Myth, Bungie's setting out to build a brand new universe and create a world that's interesting, that we can tell stories and make gameplay experiences in, and that our fans are going to want to spend another 10 years in after Halo. But we'll have more to say about that later. Les Spartans en herbe, pressés d'enfiler l'armure et de fouler le sol de Reach, n'ont plus qu'à faire preuve d'un peu de patience. Halo Reach sera en effet disponible dans les bacs terriens à partir du 14 septembre prochain, exclusivement sur Xbox 360.